All right, friends. Well, Donnie Walker uh, brought by a power saw. Believe it or not, it's the 592, friends. Right there. We're gonna give it a go. Uh, he, he hasn't got he hasn't got the lower dogs on it though. You know what I mean? It's it's the 592, but but he's only got one dog on it. And a shout out right now to the folks that don't use power saws, don't log, don't have really any aspirations to do any of that thing. They just come here to see me and to be with me and to listen to my stories and share my life with you. My friends, I speak to you right now, those people, I love you. I do, I love you dearly. You come here to just hang with me and you even say in the comments sometimes, Bucking, I don't log, I don't have any, I don't run chainsaws or power, or whatever you want to call them. Just, I, I, I just like to come here for the message. To those people, I speak to you right now. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome. So anyway, friends, this, I come in once in a while on a video like this, and I, I say to folks, not a good video to skip. If you can find time in your life to Turn, turn the, turn the, turn the video off if you don't have time and you're thinking you want to just flip through and watch the tree go over. Hey, you know what? Go for it. That's great. We all do it. But if you want to learn something and if you want to enjoy the journey with me, not a good video to skip. We lift this, grab a freaking cup of Joe, sit down, put your feet up. Heck, watch it twice. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're interested in this type of thing, because tree workers aren't fallers, and fallers aren't tree workers. We've established this. They're two different animals completely. I, I get the I get the tree services emailing me and saying, Buck and why why don't you try a rope? <laughs> oh, this is what I'm saying, friends. I just, I chuckle. And they don't like hearing that. Tree services get their snarls up when they hear that because they, you know, it's the type of industry where it's, oh. They're proud. They're proud people. And I get it. And you should be proud. But tree workers aren't fallers. They're just not. And, and, and fallers ain't tree workers. Oh, it's funny. I get a kick out of it, actually. Don't skip this video if you want to learn something about wedgemanship and placement of wedges and things to do when it comes to a big bang big big bang it's a good tune my wife listens to it once in a while cheers see you inside and i gotta cut a pretty good sized tree here right now so it shan't give me uh it shan't give me too much problem I, I've got one dog on there. I'm hoping it doesn't interfere with my game here. We got an interesting, um, a bit of an interesting removal here. I may, uh, I wonder if I've got any spare wedges. This is a pretty, a pretty good sized cedar. It's not leaning the right way, of course. I don't really have any spare wedges. So let's let's go see what we can get done here. At least I don't think I do. I may have one. Bears, I always throw them in here. Here they are. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. I do have spares. At least I know. So I've only got this little pouch, friends, today. I don't when I don't have more than a couple trees to bring, I don't bring my big my big show. I just don't. Let's go with this 592. I'm gonna give you my straight goods opinion on this saw. I've never used one. Actually, never is not true. I did use one. Now look at this, friends. Somebody's done a bit of logging around here. They took out all these cedar trees. So when you have your spiral fins done on your property, you, you're, you're doing a smart thing. Anyway, <clears throat> we got a humongous tree right there. It's big. 
I'll bet it's five foot. Seriously, it's four for sure. But he wants it right down here and I'm fighting a bunch of brush. Look at, so there's the tree. I mean, there's, <laughs> I'll show you when I get in there what we got. I got a big wedge banger, so I got a good size ax at least, but it's not leaning my way, friends. Yeah, it's, it's not the greatest here. So here's the tree. Good. Okay, so here's the deal though. I'm gonna scan up. You're gonna have a look at what we got. I gotta be home at four o'clock for a meeting. Look at, this is what we got. And it's gotta come through those crowns. See, I'm right up against that maple crown. So I'm hoping, I think I can get it moving quick enough to leave the stump, okay? And come right through here. It may, and then I gotta come through here. You see, right through that gap between that fir and that maple. I'm gonna fire up this power saw, get it warm, and we're gonna put a cut in this thing. And I don't know, it's hard to say. It, it's, it's leaning hard, but he wants it down by the woodshed. I could just lay it back here anywhere, but he don't want that. So these are the times, friends, when, I, you know, it's funny, friends. I get people saying to me, and this is really odd. I'm, I'm just gonna say this right now. This is, this is very odd to me. I get tree services commenting on my videos. Why wouldn't you just, why do you do that? With why do you bang? <laughs> Seriously friends, I do. Why do you bang a wedge when you can put a, put a rope in it? And, I, and I'm like, well, the tree's gonna be on the ground and you're gonna be setting up your rigging is what's gonna be happening. Fallers use wedges. Friends, that's what we use. When we can fall a tree, we fall a tree. A lot of, lot of fallers, if they can't fall it, they walk, they leave. When I can bang, I bang. It's that simple. It's, if I can bang it, I bang it. This thing, I can bang. It, although, it's not pretty. But when are they? When, you tell me, when are they? This is a good size freaking tree. Look at this. Oh yeah, and it's leaning. Oh yeah, she's, she's leaning, all her bones are out the backside. Big tree, <laughs> but I gotta fight this freaking crowd here, friends. Got maple, right down there. There's the house, right? Wood pile, right there is where they want it. That fur might go. I'm not joking you, that fur might just get wrapped up in this and get folded over. But I don't have much time here. So, actually it's four foot, but look where all the weight is. It's on the back side. And this one beside it better not give me the gears. It better not hook into this thing. I'll get angry if it does. I may take it too. Anyway, we'll see what happens here. Let's get cutting. Okay, 592. Let's have a look. Let's see how she performs, friends.
Okay, friend. So, so this shot that I'm taking right now has to be right, like literally bang on. I, I'm, I'm actually lifting it up off a sling hard. And I have a plan here. And I'm going to show you the undercut the way I do. I've done this undercut many, many times on big trees. But you guys haven't seen me do this system for a while. want to show you my first cut where that ended up okay you saw what I did right I'm just gonna take you off the camera just to show you what's there for cleanup and I'm actually I'm actually gonna take a sweep off the top and I'm gonna make it wider because what it'll do is it'll travel and it'll hit that crown see maybe just past that crown and it'll close up Every cut, I just did that to get a nice low stump and get comfortable in a flare. See? So here's the cut. It's actually clean. There's actually a little teeny bit of clean up there and that is it. Like I'm, I nailed it actually, friends. There's a little dutchy over there. Little teeny bit of a Dutchman. And without this other dog, this is interesting. I've only got one dog. You'll see here. There, right there. I just gotta nip that little piece off. Whack. And and that's her. It it's so it's quite clean, actually. But I'm not done. I'm gonna open the top up because I need travel time, you see. And there's no Dutchman inside. You know what I mean by that? That's seven minutes gone by. Okay, so there, there is no Dutchman inside. So I'll show you what we do. This is what we do. This is what I do. I could have made a higher stump, friends. I could have. And then and then swept under and made a great big sloopy guy, but <laughs> Friends, I need this tree to pick up speed a bit, not be impeded by the undercut closing. If it closed, if I left it thin like that. I pretty much think that I would get either hung in the maple or it would break off sideways and do something gnarly. I need it to stay on course and bust its way through the crowns. So that's why we're opening this up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Friends, I'm going to do a little bit of um, chatting, voiceover. You'll notice there's a couple of different cutting camps, East Coast and West Coast. East Coast does a lot of back bar, and you'll notice I'm on a back bar, but it, that was because I was on the pulling chain on the other side of the chain. You'll watch me flip the bar here right there. I'm back on a pulling chain. Working on a back bar you're being pushed away from your work. I was just telling you that the tree is hollow in the center is, is what I was saying to you. But, but notice I'm working on a pulling chain here because it, it's not pushing me away from the work. A, a, a back bar is a lot harder work than a pulling chain and more dangerous. So if you can work on a pulling chain as much as you can, which is what this is, it's a pulling chain. Um, when you got a back bar, you got a back bar. No question about it. We all do it. But when you can, work on a pulling chain. It's pulling you into your work, not pushing you away from your work. Friends, wedge placement is so important. You'll notice I actually whacked that flare off there because flares break out. I learned that the hard way when I was a young man until I got hooked up with the, the old fallers and they said, don't, don't do that. Put your wedge in a seam. It, it, it won't break. So I learned that by busting out lots of wood on cedars mainly. Before I got caught doing it, <laughs> I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't want it 
on the woodshed, and I don't want it, definitely don't want it, in that maple crown. See that? See what we're dealing with here? It's about a 150 foot cedar. Dry as a bowl. All my whole wood is here. I got a great big undercut. That doesn't see it there. It doesn't even come into play. All our weight is on the low side of the tree. Somebody was asking me about low side to high side. That is the low side. It's the low side of the ground and it's the low side of the tree. Try and finish up on your high side all the time. I see guys cutting on the low side all the time and there's no need for it. Learn how to cut trees from both sides of the tree. Make stumps from both sides. Friends, just a quick interjection on the wedging here, because you're just you're just gonna see me going here, because I'm not gonna keep stopping in and out like I do all the time. This is this was a long bang. It took me probably it took me from start to finish about a half an hour to cut the tree down. Uh, now a lot of that was after the undercut was built, which you saw was banging wedges, and so so the first you'll notice the first wedge I put, friends, I went underneath. Wedge placement is so, so important. I went underneath the lay, like right underneath the lay, poof. So then the next one, I start pushing the tree into its undercut, right? So lift, then push. What are you gonna do? And when I start to push it into its undercut, okay. instead of lifting off that, you know. Okay, go. All of a sudden now, I freed up that, that wedge, that first wedge that I pounded in. So now I got to start thinking about doubling up. Where am I going to double up? Where's going to be my most lift? It, trust me, friends, you, you can't just blindly go at it. You've got to have a plan. I had a wedge plan way before I, you know, even before I started cutting the back cut. I see the flares. I see the spots. So have a plan with your wedges. Think, okay, I'll put my my single in there. I'll bash, how many wedges have I got? I got four, okay, so I'll bash one there, I'll bash one there. And then sooner or later, you've got to start banging one quite a bit further than the other so that you can pull the other one out. If you bang them both in all the way, well, now you can't get one out. So you, you got to be thinking ahead. So anyway, then this is what we do here. way before you start banging wedges.
about to send over a big cedar. turn that saw off I'm probably gonna need it I may need to cut the high side off maybe not I don't want to cut any more of this wood I'm not cutting anymore it'll break off no I'm not cutting anymore There it goes. Hear it? It's hung up, friends. It's hung up. At this point, I've moved the tree. I, I've moved the tree eight feet at this point. Easy eight feet, the top of it. And it's ready to pop. And I do not want to have to run over and pull on a cord. If I need to cut high wood, I'm shooting a complete, like a gap, totally. And this thing's ready to pop. I don't want to cut any more of this wood. I'm not cutting anymore. 
it'll break off. No, I'm not cutting anymore. There it goes. Hear it? It's hung up, friends. It's hung up. I'll show you why I didn't cut it. I'll show you why I didn't cut no more wood. So this is where we were putting it. The trail, see this right here? The trail is right there. There's no freaking way you got those hangers there. See those? You don't go running out there. Wait till that settles. See that hanger there? Don't get all excited and running out there. That thing, you'll be out there limbing that thing and that'll drop and grab you and kill you, or change your week, or year. You don't know this. Let the crown settle. It's called settling. Let it settle. That was a 30 minute job. It went a little to the left, but I'm glad it did because it would have got hung and fell off into that maple. And that would have been a horrible, horrible thing. Now, here's what we got. Look at, see that? There's my high wood right there. Look what cedar does. It doesn't even hinge. Look at it. It just breaks. If I had a nipped, look right here. I was right here. If I had a nipped that top corner, friends, trust me, I'm not joking you. Look, it's like glass. If I had a nipped a little bit more, it had broke off into its heavy weight right into that maple and it would have been a horrible, horrible mess. Straight goods. So, we're a little to the left, but that's life. I'm just gonna limb that on the way down. Try this saw on limbing. Let's see if it's a limmer. Let's have a go. It's a nice saw, this. It's got the grunt. as you can see friends but I like I do these for a reason like this I do I come up off the stump like that because yeah. they hinge better you notice what I did I actually chose to bring that up high like that friends like that for a couple different reasons whoops sorry friends I was talking about my stump I did that for a couple different reasons for starters the precaution the thought process is what if it breaks off? What's it going to do? Well, if you're pulling off a Hollywood stump, it's going to, uh, it can spin off and come back, but not with a high stump like that. Like that's probably three, four inches off the, off the undercut, right? I do those on these. I did it all the way across. I, I actually chose to do that that way. It's not like I came in uneven. I chose to put that back cut up above. These trees, when I put those great big, you know, those big old timers used to do them. They used to come in just straight like that and knock a wedge out. Well, I essentially did the same thing, but with an undercut when I made that top cut and just bang, banged it out. Right? So, so essentially, that's that same thing. Do you guys know what I'm talking about on those cuts? I'll show you briefly what I mean. I'll show you. 
But they, they didn't have the luxury of doing that. They would go in, they would bang their stump out. You know what I mean? They'd bang it out with an ax, you see? That's, exact, that's actually exactly what they do. And then they snipe the front off. They snipe it like this. So, so that's how that goes. And then they bring the back cut in. And away they go. So that's an old school undercut. Bear Claw showed me that freaking 20 years ago. That, that's, I mean, that's sloppy, but you get the, you get the, the idea. So friends, we gotta, we gotta head out of here. We gotta go now. Uh, do you need me to do anything here, Rick? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. You've, done, you've done everything you need to do. Okay, thanks buddy. So here's what we were fighting, friends. This is what we were fighting. Now that it's gone, that right there. Really, in, in a beautiful world, it would have been nice to just be on, just on the right of that, but it wasn't going there. There's no, look at, it would have got hung in that maple, especially because I had no space. I only had about 15 feet of travel before it laid into the crown. So I actually brought it up. I could have waited and waited and cut my high wood off. Did you know me? Did you notice me cutting wood? on my high side there as it was leaving. I was making sure it would drift into his, closer to his woodshed for him. So that, that was the thought behind that, if anybody's gonna ask. That's what I was doing. I wanted to save the fir tree, the maple beside it, which we did. So actually everything came out very nice in this hole instead of there. That would have been a fight. It, I know what it would have done here. It would have caught here, broke off, and took that fur with it and gone down there. That, that's my inclination. Don't know, didn't happen, but that's what I think. So there we are, a big dirty cedar. See you back at the ranch. EXL. It's fast cutting freaking chain, right out of the box. Well, <clears throat> friends, I, I gotta be honest. I, excuse me, I, I'm just gonna speak very freely because why not? It's a long video, but it takes time to capture things like that. Not a lot of people show that stuff on the internet. Um, what it takes, that tree got jacked up with wedges, probably close to 10 feet. It's just what it is. Think about that for a minute. 10 feet. The top of that tree moved <clears throat> 10 feet with little plastic wedges and an ax. That's was pretty, pretty cool. Danny McGiffin, I remember, I tell this story once in a while. This is a long enough video, but I do enjoy this because I learned my wedgemanship as a young aspiring faller in the creeks around here, skitter logging with Danny McGiffin. Cedar has always been a, a, a like a, a high dollar wood okay and where i was cutting these trees are dying left and right the neighbor actually cut a bunch of his down because he's getting them before the bugs do and i'm going back to rick's to actually assess what he has here we might do some cutting and and we might even we'll see well he doesn't want to wreck his forest but there's a way to do it right because it's either that or just let the bugs get them you know that that i cut that up i cut some of that that big tree up into firewood with the big saws and that's another video, and that is an enjoyable video, let me tell you. But the 592, friends, here, here it is straight goods for you, okay, for me. You all know how I feel, excuse me, about the 500. Okay. 
I don't like I don't like an, an engine telling me when it's when it's time to stop revving your saw. I don't, I don't need to be told by a motor when it's time to stop revving. Like a rev limiter. Don't like rev limiters. You you hear it in this video. You hear it when I cut the high wood off that stump. It goes. Wah! It's hitting the rev limiter. Kind of sounds like a four stroke. You hear that terminology in the saw world. Well, that's not the four stroke and nor is that that 500. That's the rev limiter. I don't like it, friends. I don't, I don't like it. What I do like is my 372s, my old school, non-governed, non-governed uh, uh, ignitions. I just don't like it. So, but I, as far as a new saw goes, I'm a Husky guy. That 92 is a nice power saw. But I, I think... There's a real theme with new equipment and the world where we've gone is they don't really build anything to last anymore because that's scary for a company to do that. Think about Myrtle. How many trucks do you think I would have bought back in 1969 or 67? Or the, the 50s, for that matter, when they made things strong. How many do you think I would have bought? Well, I'm still driving that one. That one's 55. Honey, are you 55? Yeah. My wife's 55. That means Myrtle's 55. And so is Sylvia. And they're still going strong. So companies can't make any money that way. So I hope that's not happening to the power saw world, but it looks like it might be because these things are breaking and the stills of the Huskies and some of their parts, it's just... So I don't like new saws. I'm just going to give it to you. But as far as a new saw, if that's all I had, I would be... I, I like that 592. It's very nice. It's got pull. It actually buzzes up not bad. But here's the thing. I talked to Donnie Walker uh, about this the other day. I said, Donnie, let me ask you. If you were on a desert island for 10 years, what power saw would you want? And I think you might know the one he said. It's the same one I said, except my bar was a little longer than his. It's just the way it is, friends. Anyways, friends, I love you. I love this community. I'm having so much fun. Friends, our channel's growing. Um... It's been a pleasure working with the with the Nick's boots and, and just how our channel has has grown and and it's just such a pleasure to build content for you. I love being in your homes and I thank you so much. Work hard, be honest, and be kind. And I'll catch you on the next video, which is gonna be a blast. <laughs> Over and out, friends. Uh -huh.